Hey everyone, this is Chris from SyncMain, and today I'm going to talk about why I'm getting rid of most of my programming books. So I've obviously been collecting a lot of books and random stuff for a lot of years, and this honestly isn't everything that I've collected over time. I have gotten rid of stuff through, you know, when I'm getting ready to move or just when there's too much stuff on my shelf and I have new stuff coming in. Uh, that's usually when I'll go donate the books or uh, sell the more valuable ones online. It's getting to a point now where I've kept some of these pretty much only for nostalgia reasons. They're not really that valuable to me anymore. I think I thought early on, especially before I entered the game industry, that I would need to have these books as a quick reference a lot. And that hasn't really been the case. There's been a few times I've, I've cracked them open looking for you know, specific solutions for things that I'm working on, uh, and it doesn't really work that way. So specifically with the, uh, the GEMS books and the AI game programming wisdom, there's specific problems that people were working on that they found solutions for that they thought might be helpful to uh, share with everyone else. And once you've kind of read through them, it, it's kind of more interesting postmortems than anything, especially, you know, it's not really going to be something that you apply to your day-to-day -day work. A lot of the information that's in them that is helpful can be found elsewhere for free online or uh, through asking a coworker if you're already working in the game industry and that kind of thing. And a lot of them, I think, honestly, you might just kind of come to the same conclusions yourself just through your own experience and, and what you're trying to build. So I don't think there's really anything inherently specific and, and valuable that is contained within any one programming book. And I don't think you have to acquire any books to um, become a programmer. It's probably obvious to a lot of you, uh, especially people younger than me. Maybe uh, I'm sort of already preaching to the choir, but I have gotten comments on my last videos saying, you know, hey, Chris, you've got a bunch of books in the background sitting on your bookshelf. Which ones do you recommend? Uh, and which ones should I go out and buy? Really, I, I don't think anyone needs to spend money on this kind of thing. I've probably wasted a bit of money myself uh, trying to buy books that didn't really turn out to be anything that useful to me. But there are a few that if you have the extra cash and it's not going to bankrupt you or something, um, there are books that I, I do uh, still find valuable and I'm going to keep. Uh, and there, there's only a few of them and uh, still a couple. It's just for nostalgia reasons. Here's the ones that I'm going to be keeping. First up, we've got Mathematics for 3D Game Programming and Computer Graphics. Uh, this is the second edition. The author is Eric Lengel. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Eric has some newer books, I think, on uh, maths that you know are important for, for games and, and graphics programming. Uh, but I have this one. I didn't learn 3D math from this book directly, uh, but I do use this often as a kind of uh, gut check. So when I'm heading into a, you know, gameplay programming interview, um, I, I've i been in the industry for over 10 years now, and I cannot get over my nervousness when doing interviews. Uh, so <laughs> leading up to the interview, my preparation is to grab this book and just start flipping through the chapters and then realize and tell myself like, okay, you remember this stuff. They're not going to completely surprise you with something that you've never heard before in the the you know programming test portion of the interview process, and that's worked out pretty much every time. This book settles my nerves. If you haven't learned these things, Eric is a, a very good writer, and uh, he understands these concepts on a, a super detailed level. I've always found his books to be, uh, yeah, just really well written and informative, and they build up in a, a kind of natural way where if you're being introduced to it for the first time, uh, it's probably not the worst way to go. I'll put a link to probably the one that he would be like, please go buy in the description. Math is important for game programming, as I'm sure you know. Uh, so this is my go-to math book. Next up, this is a step back in time. This is uh, Algorithms in C++ by Robert Sedgwick. I think this book is from the 90s. Let's see. Written in 1992, or published in 1992, a collection of sorting algorithms, um, graphs, structures, like way of, of structuring data, things that you would learn in a data structures class. Something that was kind of funny in, uh, when I first started really doing YouTube was I'd, I'd get comments from people like, do I need to learn uh, DSA? I'm like, what the hell is DSA? Data structures and algorithms is like a compressed like checkbox for people 
I guess, wanting to learn to become programmers um, and pass their, you know, FANG interview. But yeah, uh, data structures are important and algorithms are important. A lot of them, they're, they're going to be helpful. Uh, I recommend learning about linked lists and arrays and uh, not necessarily in that order, graphs, trees, and then learn sorting algorithms and, and learn, learn things so that you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, but also like, don't force yourself to use these things and, and shoehorn in like, well, you know, I know this great algorithm it, it, when it might be simpler just to do the easy thing, uh, easy thing that run fast. Why do I have this one? I definitely don't use this as reference anymore. It came in handy in high school when I was having trouble uh, learning um, some of the more advanced concepts. And it came back up again when I was learning data structures in college. And it, it was just kind of a nice second reference to things that I was being taught uh, by the professor or in the books that we had. The, the examples are written in a very short form, old school C++, but this was my dad's book. So that's why I have it. He wrote his name in it. I, I like seeing the signature. It feels very like, and now to you, my son. Um, re in reality, I just stole it off his bookshelf. And I, I think I asked him if he wanted it back. He's like, no, it's gonna go into garbage, so. I, I'm keeping it. I don't think it's uh, too harmful to have a book on hand that's about things that apply across different languages. This one happens to be in C++, but you know, these things apply no matter what language you're using. Good information and it's small. I'm gonna keep it on my bookshelf. And you know, if I ever have children, here you go, my daughter, please. Next up, this is uh, actually a new one for me. Um, I've read this over time uh, on the internet, because it's free on the internet. So don't buy this book unless you have expendable income like I did at one point, uh, at least enough to buy this book. So Data Oriented Design by R. Fabian, probably 10 or 11 years ago, um, Mike Acton was doing a talk on Data Oriented Design. I think it was at like CppCon, uh, so C++ developers. <laughs> I actually kind of remember it being fairly controversial. This was, you know, oop reigning supreme, you know, any issues that you have with it are your own fault and, uh, you know, start looking elsewhere to sc screed your diatribes. Uh, those might be words. This is a really good book, just uh, kind of thinking about uh, how you structure your programs. Uh, I found it super informative. Uh, I don't like to think of any books as like a Bible, but um, if I had to recommend one for people to look at and maybe start thinking differently about uh, how they, uh, write their code so that they maybe don't need to do a bunch of refactoring to, to make things run fast. Um, I've had a lot of success and luck following ideas in the data-oriented design world. So yeah, it's a short, shortish, neat kind of read. Food for thought. It's a good one. Lastly, and this is the big one. This is a book that I will never get rid of. Uh, this is Real-Time Collision Detection by Christer Erickson. Uh, so this is the first edition, and I'll talk about why, if you're going to try to buy it, get the first edition in a minute. Uh, but this book, there's a lot of like fundamental math concepts in it, uh, but more tailored to building up um, knowledge uh, that's required for, or, or at least revisiting that knowledge for building real-time collision detection. There's collision algorithms and collision-specific things in here, uh, but I'm a gameplay programmer, and I find the information in this book is super relevant uh, even if you're not writing your own collision systems, uh, it helps me understand some fundamental concepts that I think are shared across a lot of engines. It's also information on floating point format and uh, the issues that you can have with them and kind of building numerical robustness, I think they call it in the book. It's just a fantastic book. I learned a lot from it. The way I found out about this one was I was working at Ready at Dawn and there was a lot of really great, smart engineers and they showed me some things that I was like, man, where did you learn this? And they're like, oh, you haven't read this book? I really like this one. I have a digital copy. Um, I recommend digital copies of any of these books if you can find them uh, or any books that you get, especially if it's just gonna be like programming reference after a while. Uh, I like physical books for like novels and comic books, but sometimes you just need to look something up and rather than going through the content section or flipping through the index, looking for specific terms with like a PDF or whatever, you can just quickly use find tools and, and search through the document. Unfortunately, the author, I believe, did not authorize 
the second and maybe even further editions of this book. This was just the first edition. This is the only one they stand behind. Uh, they approached him to um, just kind of update it for updating sake to make a second edition. And he was like, why would I do that? The information I wanted to put into this book is in this book and it's relevant and I agree. Um, so I don't recommend in, in going out and buying those newer editions. It might be hard, really hard to find a copy of the first edition. So um, I just want to say I do not recommend piracy. I don't condone piracy. So yeah, I have a digital copy that I use as reference. This is, you know, if the world burns, I have something to read and look back on. Um, or like, you know, the internet disappears. So that's the last of like the programming reference. I might keep some things like the Michael A. Brash book. It's just kind of for historical reasons. Uh, if you ever read Masters of Doom, there's some kind of like neat behind the scenes information in there. I definitely don't think I'm gonna be doing any VGA programming anytime soon. Certainly not optimizing it with assembly. That's just kind of a, a nostalgia keep, kind of an iconic book in my world. So I just like having it. A lot of these are gonna go. I don't think that there's any one book that you need to go out and buy and own and keep and have uh, and you know read through to make you a better programmer <clears throat> or make you a more complete person. I mean, there's probably books that make you more complete person, but I don't think it's gonna be in the programming section of Barnes and Noble. Before I go, uh, I just wanna show you some things that I'm new to reading. Uh, so things that will be replacing the books on the shelf. A lot of it is just kind of uh, like management and like software development things in general, working with teams. I, I have goals of one day running my own studio. I see, I've seen other people do it in their careers. I've seen people do incredible things on their own and then build up from there. I don't really know what my path is with that. You know, day to day, I have a job, happily employed. I'm working on a cool project that I can't talk about. This is more just kind of planning for the future and making sure that I have the knowledge that I need to have for when opportunities come along in my life, hopefully to do the things that I want to do. This is the uh, time to go to sleep part of the video, but yeah, I just wanted to show you a few of the things that I'm reading. Uh, they were recommended to me either by people that I respect. One of these is a dad recommendation. Uh, he ran his own software company for a long time. This one, I believe this was a Gabe Newell recommendation. I don't know him personally, but he talked about this. This is Peopleware. I think this was like the inspiration for Valve's producerless structure at their studio. I don't know if I'd necessarily agree with doing that if I were to run my own company, but I at least want to kind of read and understand the source and kind of the justifications of what they were thinking. If you're one of my producers watching this, you're doing a great job. <laughs> a big fan. This one was another, I think, newer one that came out, Trader Joe. It's just about the person who started Trader Joe's. Yeah, I like reading business books. This is what I do with my time. Um, you can see there's a bunch of like anime down here that I bought during the pandemic. Didn't watch any of that shit. I'm just reading business manuals. This is was my dad's recommendation, The Hard Thing About Hard Things uh, by Ben Horowitz. So I haven't read that. Sorry, dad, but it's on my list. Going through it. Clearing up space on these shelves to take on my current interests and build and learn and grow and continue as I get older and as I continue on in my career. So anyway, uh, this was a longer video than I imagined, but uh, I hope this is helpful to some of you. And uh, if you have any topics that you want to see me cover. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about this, but I haven't really taken YouTube seriously in the past, um, but I think I do want to make more videos. So pop your suggestions down in the comments below. I tend to read all of the comments. Um, so looking forward to making more YouTube videos. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>